<clears throat> Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I greet you, my dear brothers and sisters worldwide. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and I'm thankful and I'm privileged to come before you again to answer one of the questions that has recently been raised on the teachings that I've been giving on the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42. Praise Jesus. Uh, you remember that recently um, I've been given a teaching on the a need for the Church of the Living God to continue in the four things that has been mentioned in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 42. This and namely the Apostles' Doctrine, Fellowship, the breaking of bread and prayers. We've covered this for extensively and with the emphasis that the Church of the Living God need to continue in these things to remain alive and to be alive and to ever be fruitful. Praise God. But uh, recently a question has been raised actually and one of the questions was actually whether the breaking of bread that is mentioned in Acts chapter 2 verse 42 um, and Acts chapter 2 verse 46 and also Acts chapter 20 verse 7 refers to the Lord's Supper. Um, in my teaching, um, I've been very clear that this breaking of bread refers to the Lord's Supper and the church was commanded to continue in them. Praise God. Um, but there is a contention, uh, praise the Lord, saying that this breaking of bread is not the Lord's Supper. Um, it is probably just a normal food they were eating when they were coming together. But maybe to be able to answer this question, we need to start from the very foundation, praise Jesus. And basically to do so, we need to go back to the four Gospels, because that is where Jesus gave the commandment, and uh, we look through all of them, um, and I will emphasize actually the points, certain points as I go through the scriptures, praise the Lord. And it's going to be long. Uh, we're going to go through quite an extensive scriptures and evidences, praise God, and you've got to be patient with me. Hallelujah. And even when you listen to the video, you've got to be a little bit patient, praise the Lord. Um, to start with, actually, Jesus gave the institution of the breaking of bread, the institution of the Lord's Supper in the four Gospels. Praise God. And we're going to go through the four Gospels extensively, but I will go through the first three. The Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Luke, and the Gospel of Matthew. Praise the Lord to, for the clarity of understanding how the Lord's Supper ever began. Praise Jesus. Because unless we understand the very foundation, the very beginning where the breaking of bread, where the Lord's Supper starts, then we'll never come to understand the setting and the nature of the breaking of bread. Praise Jesus. And, and to do that, and I'm going to go to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14. Um, we're going to read from verse 10. Praise God. From verse 10 to, praise Jesus, verse 20. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Um, uh, basically, we're going to go into until verse 21. Praise Jesus. 
um, and, and of course uh, we continue all the way up praise Jesus um, to start with let me read through the gospel of Mark chapter 14 from verse 10 then Judas Iscariot one of the twelve went to the chief priests to, to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. So he sought how he might conveniently betray him. So from verse 10 and 11, you can actually understand that Judas Iscariot had a plan to betray Jesus, and he went in secret to the high priestess, uh, to the chief priestess, and they gave him money, and Judah was looking for convenient time to betray Jesus, to show them who he was, so that they could arrest him, praise Jesus. So, um, I want you, because there is a point of relevance here, and I want you, underst I want you to understand the state of, of the condition of Judas Iscariot because we're going to use at the later stage. Judah was, Judas was stealing from the money because he was a treasurer at the time. But on top of that, he was betraying Jesus as well. He was planning. He was um, uh, engaging in, an, in conspiracy to betray Jesus, to give him up to the high priestess and to the chief priestess. This is very important because there is something that Jesus mentions at the later stage which is relevant. Then we continue. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and prepare that you may eat the Passover? And he went out, he sent out two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him. Wherever he goes in, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, where is the guest room in which I eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared there, make ready for us. So his disciples went out and came into the city and found it just as he had said to them. And they prepared the Passover. Okay? Now, in this part of the scripture... Um, obviously, following the conspiracy of Judas Iscariot, um, the disciples asked Jesus where he would want them to prepare the Passover. So Jesus told them where to go, who to ask for the room, and then once they get the room to prepare the Passover. And the disciples went, two of the disciples, and they went and they asked for the room and they found the room exactly as Jesus told them and they prepared the Passover. That's what we find. So really what we find here is Judas Iscariot conspiring to betray Jesus and then the disciples asking Jesus where to go and prepare the Passover and Jesus told them exactly where to go and they went to the place that he told them and they prepared the Passover. They prepared the Passover. Very important this. And then following the preparation of the Passover and from verse 17, in the evening, he came with the twelve. Jesus came with the twelve to the place where they had prepared the Passover. As 
Now as they sat and ate, Jesus said, Praise the Lord. My apology. Then Jesus said, As they were, as they sat and ate, very important. As they sat and ate, Jesus said, As surely I said to you, one of you who ate with me will betray me. They were eating the Passover. They were eating the meal. They were eating the meal of the Passover. While they were eating the meal of the Passover, as they were eating the meal of the Passover, Jesus said, one of you who is going to eat with me will betray me. Praise God. That was referring to Judas, my brothers and sisters. He was referring to Judas because Judas was conspiring to betray him. He was working behind him. He was, um, praise the Lord, in, he had engaged in conspiracy against his team so that he could sell him up, so that he could give him up to the high priestess and to the chief priestess. And he said, one of you will betray me. And verse 19, and they began to be sorrowful and to say to him one by one, look, one by one, is it I? And another said, is it I, which is Judas in the end? He answered and said to them, it is one of the 12 who dips with me in the dish. The son of man indeed goes as it is written of him. But wow to the man by whom the Son of Man will be betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not ever been born. Praise Jesus. So I want you to understand the pattern. Judas Iscariot betrayed, was working on how to betray Jesus. And then they prepared the Passover. And the past, they were sitting down and eating the Passover. As they were eating the Passover meal, Jesus told them something so that each and every one of them could examine themselves. Is it I? Is it me? Is it I, Lord? Because he literally said that one of you will betray me. He didn't say Judah is going to betray me. He didn't say that so-so is going to betray me. He said that one of you, it could be any of the twelve. Praise the Lord. He wanted them to examine themselves. He could have easily said to them that Judah is going to betray me. But he didn't say that. But he said one of you are going to bet is going to betray me. So each and every one of them coming to Jesus one by one and they were saying, is it I, Lord? Is it me, Jesus? Praise God. Is it I? Or is it I? Or is it I? All of them. And eventually Judas came in the end and also said the same thing with hypocrisy. Praise God. He knew that he was going to betray him, but he did exactly like others did. Praise Jesus. And then we come to the institution of the breaking of bread. After that. Verse 22. And as they were eating. You see the member. As they were eating. What were they eating? They were already eating the meal of the Passover. They were already eating the meal of the Passover. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for money. As surely I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it in when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out on the Mount Olives. Praise Jesus. They went out to the Mount Olives. So I want to emphasize here from the scripture that we read from Mark chapter 14 from verse 10 to 26. I'm going to repeat for you reference because you're going to look into those scriptures. From Mark, the gospel of Mark chapter 14 from verse 10 to 26. I'm just going to put certain things in order. Judas was working on how to betray Jesus. Jesus knew what he was doing because he was God in the flesh. He knew what he was thinking. He, was, he knew the conspiration that he was conducting behind the scene. He knew that he was looking for an opportunity to betray him. Then... The disciples asked Jesus where to go and prepare the Passover for him. They asked him, where do you want to eat the Passover? Where do you want us to prepare the Passover? And Jesus told them where to go. And the disciples, two of the disciples went to the place that Jesus told them. They found everything as Jesus told them. They prepared the Passover. As they were eating the Passover, sorry, as they were eating the Passover, Jesus brought something so that the disciples could examine themselves before the breaking of bread. Praise Jesus. He brought up the condition of Judas without referring to Judah directly. He said, one of you are going to betray me. One of you are going to betray me. I know you. And then each and every one of them begin to examine themselves, begin to search themselves and begin to say, is it I, Lord? Is it me, Jesus? Is it I that, it, that is going to do what you said? Praise the Lord. Though they knew deep inside the, their heart, each and every one of them, they knew themselves deep inside. So all the 12, all the 11 disciples came to Jesus one by one and they said, is it I? Is it me, Jesus? Am I going to betray you? Who is that? Because he didn't tell them who he was. One thing that I want to emphasize is the necessity the need to examine ourselves. The, the disciples didn't need to examine themselves to eat the Passover. They could come and eat the Passover. They were already eating the, the Passover meal. They were already in the middle of eating the Passover meal. They were eating food. They were eating the Passover meal already. They didn't need to examine themselves for that. But before Jesus was going to break bread with them, before he was going to break bread with them next to the meal, after they had meal, praise the Lord. He told them something for them to examine themselves. They began to examine themselves. Then after that, he gave them the Lord's Supper. Very important. As they were eating, verse 22, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said to them, this is my body that is broken for you. He blessed the cup and gave them, this is the blood of the new covenant that is to be shed for the sins of money. Praise God. 
There are two points I want to make clear, brothers and sisters. When Jesus gave them the Lord's Supper, when he broke bread with them, when he broke bread and gave them and said, this is my flesh, when he blessed the cup and gave them, this is my blood, they were already having a meal. They were already having the meal of the Passover. So I want to emphasize that the Lord's Supper that Jesus gave to the disciples was the one in which people come together, the disciples come together as they eat together, as they eat the meal together, they also take part of the Lord's Supper. So there are two parts to it. There is a normal food to eat. There is a breaking of bread, praise Jesus. <laughs> they were eating the Passover meal, which was just an ordinary food. And they were also eating the Lord's Supper. These two are different. But both were happening at the same place in the fellowship. So I want to ask the, the person who asked me the question then. What were they eating? Because verse 22 says, um, um, and, and in Mark chapter 14 verse 22 say, As they were eating, then Jesus broke bread. Then Jesus placed the cup. What was it they were eating? What was they eating? This also really answer the question where many of my brothers and sisters are fasting for seven days for four days before the breaking of bread I've covered that actually in the part of praying and fasting fasting and prayer session but the biblical pattern of the breaking of bread there is no necessity, there is no requirement to fast and pray prior to the breaking of bread. Because they were already having meal, they were already eating the meal of the Passover when he was breaking bread and when he was blessing the cup, when he gave them. Praise Jesus. They were already eating meal. They were eating the meal of the Passover. They were in the middle of eating meal. They were already in the middle of eating food. And then he broke bread and gave them. And then he blessed the cup and gave them. That is the Lord's Supper. But what they were eating prior to that was the meal of the Passover. So the meal to eat and the breaking of bread and the Lord's Supper comes together. But for, the, for a religious mentality that want to ritualize the breaking of bread, that want to make the breaking of bread a ritual practice where you're going to fast and pray for seven days or four days and then make yourself holy by what you do and then now with your holiness you come to the breaking of bread. That is not a biblical pattern. That is a religious mindset. That is a religious mindset. But the way Jesus gave, he sat with them at the table. They were eating the meal of the Passover. As they were eating the meal of the Passover, then he broke bread and this is my body. And he, he blessed the cup and said, this is my blood. Praise Jesus. That's the pattern that we find. There is a food part, there is a breaking of bread part. There is an ordinary food to eat together in the fellowship. There is the Lord's Supper. 
These two are separate, but they happen in the same setting. This is the first point that I want to emphasize. Both food and the breaking of bread coexist. Praise Jesus. And I'm going to read from the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter 22. Praise God. The book of Luke from chapter 22 from verse 7. Praise God. Not even from verse 7. From verse 1. Praise God. The book of Luke chapter 22 from verse 1. Now the feast of the unleavened bread drew near. And I want you to emphasize where it says the feast of the unleavened bread. Because I'm going to use that later on. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered Judas, surnamed Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might be trained to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. You find the same thing. When the Feast of the Unleavened Bread came near, then you can see Judas Iscariot again plotting to betray Jesus. The same thing in Mark. And then from verse 7 onward, then you see that the disciples asked Jesus where to prepare the Passover, and they went and prepared the Passover, and Jesus sat down with them, and ate the Passover. That's what you find from verse uh, 7 to verse 13. I'm going to read it. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John. You see that now? Those, those two disciples were Peter and John. Then he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat. So they said to him, where do we want us? Where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house, which he enters. Then you shall say to the master of the house, that the teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room. There, make it ready. So they went and found it just as he said to them, and they prepared the Passover. The same as the Gospel of Mark. They went as they were sent. They found the room, the upper room, and they prepared the Passover. Just exactly the same way. Then verse 14. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. He sat down and the twelve apostles with him to eat the Passover now. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. For I said to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. For I say to you that I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in 